In this video I will show you all the steps for making a silicone mask using 3D printed parts that can be downloaded from Thingiverse using the link in the description and two parts component silicone rubber. First of all, the mask is a prototype and has not been tested or approved by any field specialist, so use it at your own risk. Second, I made the mask as a proof of concept and did not work on the fine details like sending the printed parts that would make the mask look way better and without any flaws that you might observe in this video. Also, the silicone rubber I used is not designed or recommended by the producer as a skin-friendly material. And even though I had no problem wearing the mask, I would recommend choosing a skin-safe silicone material like the Dragon Skin Silicone Rubber. Subscribe to my channel and follow the descriptions and comments for useful links, updates, changes and accessories made post-uploading of this video. Speaking of accessories, I made another video with the HEPA filter that you can check on my channel in the prototypes playlist or by clicking the video suggestions at the end of this video. My name is Max and I designed the mask based on those rules. Simple production process that can be implemented in all makers communities around the world. Short production time, 2-3 to three hours per mask for each mold. If I would use 10 molds, I could make 10 masks every 3 hours while 3D printed masks take about 4-5 to five hours per mask for each printer. Repetability of the process. One mold can be used for as many masks as you please with the same results. Mask should be reusable. Silicone can be sterilized and reused and the filter can also be sterilized with UV lights and used for 3-6 to six months before changing it. Mask should be easy to disassemble for individual sterilization of each material. The mask should fit tightly and make a good seal on various face configurations. Silicone rubber has this quality. Filter should offer protection equal or better than N95 masks. The tight seal and the H13 HEPA filter should provide 99.97% efficiency in air filtration. Easy to put on and take off. Unlike the N95 masks that need proper fitting, this mask takes the shape of the wearer's face on its own. The wearer should breathe easily. The breathing hole is 36mm in diameter, which should provide enough air circulation. The mask should be comfortable. The process is pretty easy and made as simple as possible by skipping a few steps like preparing the mold properly, using the molding agent, using a vacuum machine to take out the air bubbles from the liquid silicone. I intentionally skipped those steps just to prove that it can be done with minimal equipment and skills, but I would encourage at least a proper refining of the mold for way better results. Basically, you mix two equal parts of silicone, put them into a mold and wait for a few hours or less depending on the type of silicone. First, I 3D printed the parts necessary for making the mold. The parts are designed in such a way that they don't need support, therefore not much post-processing to be done. I separately printed a ring that has to be glued on the interior part of the mold. I used M4 nuts and bolts for assembling the two halves of the exterior shell. This assembly makes it easier to get the mask out after it hardens. There is not enough space to use the washers in the assembly, so I left them out. The adhesive tape I used is for the gaps where the clips for the elastic band go. Another way to do this would be to skip this step and cut the holes manually after the silicone cures. I haven't tried it so I don't know what could go wrong, but it could be a way to simplify things. Or complicate them. Next, I used sculpting wax to seal the mold. The silicone has high fluidity and if the mold is not properly sealed, it will make a big mess. Instead of sculpting wax, plasticine or various types of clay can be used as long as they won't harden over time. The third and fourth part of the mold colored with blue in the 3D sketch earlier in this video are like a nut and a bolt. I will screw the nut and close the mold in the middle of the pouring process to ensure there is no air trapped inside the mold.
The silicon I used is ZA22 made by Zermak, a two-component high-fluidity liquid that sets in 60 minutes and has no heat transfer in the hardening process which is great because this means the 3D printed mold does not endure any stress in that period and I can make as many masks as I want with only one mold. The base and the catalyst are mixed together in equal shares. While mixing it's important to check that no unmixed component remains on the base or the side of the container. Vacuum degassing is recommended to minimize the air bubbles in the cured object. While skipping this part I try to take out as many bubbles as I can by rotating the jar at an angle, blowing out the bubbles and pouring the silicon in the mold from a high point and in a thin string. Just before the silicone starts spilling out from the unclosed lower part of the mold, I close it with the threaded cap and continue pouring until the mold is full. After 90 minutes I opened up the mold. You can see here that the silicone rubber does not stick to the printed parts even without using the molding agent. If another type of silicone is used I would recommend testing it first on a printed part before use to prevent ruining the mold. I use the spatula to separate the two parts of the exterior shell. It was a bit tricky with the threaded cap. This piece will be redesigned in the future to be unscrewed with a large screwdriver. I use scissors to take out any excess material. I am still improving the mask so feel free to comment if you encounter any problems or have new ideas on how to make this mask better. Any further improvements that I will make in the future will be updated in the description of the video. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay at home.